This project is aimed at investigating the crustal and mantle structure of the Eastern Oregon and Idaho region. We had a grid of 85 seismometers. The majority of them were spaced 40 kilometers apart, but we did have a denser line running through the center of our section where they were spaced 10 to 12 kilometers apart. Each seismic station includes a power supply, a data recorder, a GPS, and the actual seismometer itself. So what we're doing is using the signal that we're receiving from the earthquakes around the world and seeing how they've changed from where they originated to when they arrived at our station, and that can help us determine what kind of structure they've traveled through. This past summer, we had several teams working in the field. We removed our seismic array of 85 stations. So most of our sites are not off any main roads. Most of them are off dirt roads, off the highway. Sometimes the site is a couple meters away, sometimes it's hundreds of meters away. 304352. Okay. And this one is 2343. The sensor has three channels. Each wave has a vertical, north, south, and east, west component. So when the waves arrive at the seismic stations, we can measure the different portions of each of those components on our three different channels in our seismometer. Okay. And this two is zero of 90. Before we remove a seismic station, we want to make sure that it was working correctly. So we test it before we remove it from the ground. So we actually generate a small earthquake-like, just jumping. So this is called the Stomp test. The way we do that is we simply jump up and down and we check our real time monitor and make sure that the seismic equipment was recording ground motion correctly on all three channels. Channel one looks great. So, this is the vibration that was generated by Megan's jump, and this actually shows us that this particular channel, which is a vertical channel, is working properly. We do get the signal that we generated, and that's what we're looking for. Okay, then let's move to the second channel. Sure. All right, two looks good. And the last one, channel number three. You can go ahead and jump now. Good. Let's see what it comes out. If we get a clear signal, then that means that that particular channel is working properly. Okay. Beautiful. So the last channel, channel number three, was looking great, which means the station really worked very well in the last two years. The okay. station is ready to go out. The experiment is more or less over. We are happy. All right, so this is the action packer. Basically all the equipment is stored in here except for the sensor. There are two batteries, the green box, which is called a power box. It's regulating the electricity that comes from the solar panels and charges the batteries and also powers up the seismic station. The black box is the, the recorder. We have two cards inside here, which record the data. And we have a GPS and this is connected to the station. So we have a time for each of the recordings on the cards. So at every station, we do have a GPS antenna, which actually is extremely important for us. Not necessarily because we need the coordinates at every site in a very accurate way, but we need the time, exactly the time when every event, every seismic event is recorded at that particular station. If the timing is not right, the recordings are useless. In this way, we can compare the recordings from different stations and then we can go ahead and process the information we can, uh, we can squeeze from uh, this uh, kind of uh, investigations. So the next step is to stop the station, meaning that literally cutting off the electricity, the energy. So Christian is now locking the sensor, which means the three masses inside the sensor are not going to move anymore because in this way it's safely removable from the ground, otherwise the sensor will be broken. So those masses have to be fixed, not moving at all, they will be rigid. When they record, they have to be freely moving. So balancing, and this is how we get that beautiful signal. We have these solar panels mounted on a pole because we know in the winter there's a lot of snow here and if the panels are covered, it can't get any energy from the sun. So this is why we have them on a pole. So this is kind of just to be safe. It probably won't get above here.
you're good. It's coming out. All right. When removing the sensor, you have to be careful to not damage the equipment. The sensors are buried a couple meters below the ground, so we need to dig in order to retrieve them. You want it to be as deep as possible because the ground is compacted as you go further into the earth, and that will provide for better transfer of waves. So here's the sensor. It's not much, it's just a cylinder. $20,000 cylinder. The seismic equipment that we use is very sensitive. It can pick up the movement of tree roots or a deer walking by. So part of the reason why we need multiple sensors is so that we can correlate across the sensors our signals and make sure that if we have a lot of noise at one and not at another, we know it's not a true seismic event. It may just be because of local noise such as trucks or people or animals. There are bears up there. We saw them. We saw bears. <laughs> So once we remove our seismic equipment, we can't just leave holes in the ground. We make sure to arrange the site as it looked when we first arrived, before we ever installed it. This is really, really great to, to be out there, to be in this great landscape and do some work out of the office. It's, it's a little bit sad because this is ending, so we're probably not going to be in the field for the next summers doing this kind of work the network is getting out so now it's time for us to go in the office and look at the data and process but this is great it's one of the reasons why many people choose this field <laughs>